My first real journey was an Advent journey. It took place when I was two and a half years of age. And years later, I was told we began the journey at the sprawling mission-style train station near Old Plaza Church at the edge of Los Angeles. There it was, we boarded a train, followed a route from Southern California up to Seattle, where we changed to the Empire Builder for the long, long, long ride through Montana to the eastern edge of North Dakota. There are only two memories I carry from that journey so early in my life. One was the act of preparing to go to sleep in a Pullman car. Uh, a very simple memory. It seemed as if by magic, at the appointed hour, the bed came down from somewhere. <laughs> and all it took was the bed to go quarter. And this memory was closely joined to another little shard of a memory. For my parents and I were on our way to visit grandparents who lived on a farm close to Fargo, just north of the little town of Davenport. And so it was there that my second memory took place. I can recall it was an evening, a magical moonlit night, and we took a ride across the hardened, snow-covered ground on a sleigh led <coughs> by horses who seemed to prance and dance through the night. It was the birth of wonder for me. This first Advent journey north to Dakota became a lifelong spiritual bond to this strangely remote, remote portion of our nation, a place so sparsely settled that it always remembered, resembled for me a desert, where to drive at night across the Dakota landscape is to see endless darkness, only now and then punctuated by little islands of light where a farmyard stood. Childhood and family vacations were often spent at the farm on land purchased by my great-grandparents a century and a half ago. And when I was a student in college and later in seminary, I would make my way alone, my train or plane to spend a holiday there. Of course, there was always the jello salad and hot dish and pie for breakfast in the morning. It was a little piece of culinary heaven. <laughs> and I remember the buildings. Uh, among all the buildings, uh, a massive barn which sheltered teams of horses through the long Dakota winters. And beside it was a grand room and a corn crib. Each structure held its special pleasures. But it was the farmhouse itself that retained the most enduring place in my memory. In time, I came to discover each of the rooms in that generous old house. It was filled with many of the mysteries and artifacts of my family from times long past. A basement pantry with shelves overflowing with the canning of a dozen summers, little banking chairs, a sauce made of apples from the nearby orchard, choke cherry syrup. Next to the pantry were two antique parlor organs. How they got there, I have no idea. They were covered with a layer of dust in the beautiful wood and intricate carvings that accompanied the organs. On the second floor, there was a sitting room surrounded by bedrooms, several used for storage, Old family pictures, antique toys, mementos from trips to California. And it was in one of these rooms that, as a small boy, I discovered a <coughs> control machine that played records shaped like cylinders. And I can remember one. I cranked up the handle, and out came this voice. Everybody works but father, sung by George T. Watson, Edison Record. And I was transported into a different world. It was a place of wonder for me. But not only did I discover the farmhouse on this visit, but far more profoundly, I was able to be in touch with the earth beneath me and the sky above. I would sink my feet into that thick gumbo soil 
that was once the bottom of a river. And at night I would stand in the yard and gaze up into the endless expanse of the blue sky, perhaps, just perhaps, catching a glimpse of that spectacular light show we call the Aurora Borealis. <coughs> Dakota, you see, became my advent place, my own desert place. A place apart where my feet touched that beautiful black earth and my eye, night eyes were filled with the light of a hundred thousand stars. And I think we each need an advent place, a desert place to rediscover who we are and from whence we have come. The prophet Isaiah understood the call of the desert, the call we hear echoed in our gospel for today. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. This is a cry of both hope and assurance for those who were in exile, that the Lord, that Yahweh would lead the people out of their captivity in battle, across the desert, into their home. And for those of us who even now find ourselves at our world in a place of exile, we too, I believe, must pass through a desert. A desert we encounter during this Advent season. And a desert by which we can come to be ready for that new life that God desires to bring to birth in us. <laughs> 